The next thing we need to do is work out how many cells we can fit into the window that we've opened up. So we're now going to take a cell and just explain a little bit about it. So this is obviously the main component and it's the photovoltaic component of the panel so it's the bit that takes sunlight and produces electricity. And they're incredibly fragile which is the reason that uh, many of the ones that you will buy have some kind of damage to them. Some of them will have damage that's very noticeable, some of them will have damage that isn't so noticeable, and some of them will be almost completely undamaged but they'll have a slight flaw in them. But they can all be used to build up our own panels. They are very, very fragile to touch though and, and to hold. So just to demonstrate that I'm just going to kind of break that. It's something you can't really avoid. At some point you will break the cells during the workshop. Um, but just try as much as possible to have a little play with a piece that's already broken to begin with, such as this one. Just break it a little bit so you know what you're dealing with. Right, so to work out how many cells we can fit into our window, it's fairly straightforward. We just get each cell and put it down on the pane that we've taken out of the double glazing panel and we just line up the cells to see how many we can fit in. We want to get as many cells as possible into the window that we're using so that we maximise the surface area of the window. And we've picked this one because we can quite snugly fit in eight cells as you can see. The spacing between the cells can be as small as you like as long as the cells aren't touching. If the cells are touching, then we'll have a short circuit and then we'll have a problem. So you can see here that I can get eight in with enough space between them so that they're not touching, but not too much space so that they fit in nice and snug. Now when you connect things in series, you're summing the voltages, and we'll talk more about voltage later on, but you're averaging the currents. So the fact that this cell is going to be giving out a smaller current than this cell because it has a smaller surface area and the fact that you're going to be connecting them in series means that the current output, the effective current output of this cell is going to be dragged down by this cell. So what we want to do really is only build panels where the cells are the same size, roughly the same size as one another. So for this one, because most of the cells in this panel are almost fully complete, what I'm going to do is replace this one with another that's basically fully complete. Now this one does have a little corner off it, but that's not enough damage for us to really worry about. You know, these are basically the same size, they're going to be giving about the same current output. And I might replace this one because I've got a nice complete one here with that one. And so that's pretty good now. None of these cells are going to be dragging down the current output of any of the others by any significant degree.